So I continue with the same accent. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, so I will, I will talk about a, uh, a library I implemented in Clojure, the Clojure programming language, uh, which is an implementation of the type theory. And uh, I will mostly uh, take the point of view of uh, a Lisper wanting to implement a DSL. So first, we we'll talk about D. So I'm an associate professor at the University Pierre-Emerick Curie in Paris, in France. And I, do I don't do research in programming languages. I'm more on, let's say, formal methods. But I teach a lot of programming languages. <coughs> and I, uh, during my spare time, I, I try to program a little bit. Uh, and this uh, when I do a, a list in general. Except that for, I, I managed to have one course with a, uh, closure. I can sell closure for my colleagues, whereas uh, I could not sell a commodity. So, so that's one reason why I do closure. And I used to teach a lot of scheme <coughs> uh, a few years ago. Okay, so, but I, I really like to program in general in multiple programming languages. I'm not really uh, uh, attached to one form. Uh, but concerning this, um, I would say very quickly that I'm scheme by name because I did a lot of skin, because my uh, mentor was Christian Kenneck, who probably know about Christian Kenneck. And I discovered a long time after that that I was not really a skimmer. I prefer common list, so I'm common list by value. And uh, recently, I, uh, uh, okay, I saw that there is a vibrant uh, uh, closure community, so uh, let's say that I'm closure by value. Also, because I discovered the interest of uh, that's a pure functional programming. And I will a little bit talk about this. Okay. So, <clears throat> what I will present is a, it's called Latte. Uh, it's a uh, proof assistant because in my work, I use a lot of proof assistants and uh, they don't satisfy me <clears throat> in a way. And the idea of a proof assistant, uh, oh, maybe who is um, familiar with proof assistants in the audience? Okay, a few of you. But it's not a, <coughs> a requirement for my talk. Uh, so the idea is to be able to formalize uh, mathematics on a computer, and let's say uh, the logical side of uh, mathematics. You want to, to do definitions and uh, state axioms, state theorem, and prove them. That's the main uh, reason why you use a proof assistant. <coughs> and in this particular case, it's implemented purely as a library. Uh, and I will explain a little bit uh, the interest of having a library. And I also developed, uh, let's say, basic uh, mathematics, uh, uh, really basic libraries for the moment. So in this presentation, I will adopt the developer point of view. So it's not really the point of view I take in the paper. Uh, it's more like uh, what is the theory behind the proof assistant and what is the interest of using a list to implement a proof assistant. But here, I will only talk about this part. And if you are interested in type theory or uh, proof assistance uh, or, or let's say a lambda calculus, I would suggest another uh, talk that I gave at uh, Euro Closure uh, last year. It's really not the same point of view, so it's complementary. So, why uh, do I find uh, proof assistant interesting from the developer point of view? <coughs> the thing is, it's really a, a very good example of uh, a DSL. Uh, but not, a, let's say, a shallow DSL, something easy to implement just with a bunch of macro, but something more deep. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it's also, but you will agree with me, that uh, Lisp, or let's say variants of Lisp, are probably the ultimate way to uh, interact with a computer. And mathematics is not uh, uh, an exception. And I will also talk a bit about the interest of uh, this morning we, have, we heard a bit about this uh, data orientation uh, that is very, very uh, uh, in the idea of uh, programming enclosure, so I will talk a bit about, about this also. <coughs> uh, okay, first a disclaimer, uh, because maybe by reading the paper, at least some reviewer, reviewers thought that I should um, um, uh, compare more with other proof assistants. I don't want really to compare with other proof assistants, uh, um, even if I will show you a little bit of another proof assistant, but the idea is that it's really a personal project. It's the way I would like to, uh, the, the proof assistant to work. Uh, for my 
a particular case. But uh, interestingly, a few people who are also interested, and so I have a few contributors and a few users also, but very few users. Uh, I, don't, I will not say the number of users. <laughs> uh, and the main um, drawback, let's say, of the approach is that you have to accept that the Lisp is the Lisp notation is uh, the best way to uh, for to describe mathematical contents, and most mathematicians won't uh, agree. They prefer the standard mathematical notation. Uh, also, there is nothing new at the theoretical level because uh, everything comes from a, a very good book about uh, type lambda calculus and type theory. So if you're interested in logic and, uh, and lambda calculus, it's a very good, uh, a very good book. Uh, so, but there is no, nothing about the implementation in, in the book, of course. So first I will take an example. Uh, so I don't intend to, to, to teach uh, natural deduction to people uh, who don't know natural deduction, but I will explain very quickly. So it's a, it's a, a proof. So the, I have my main hypothesis uh, at the top and the conclusion at the end. So if the proposition P implies the proposition Q and the negation of R implies negation of Q, I should be able to prove that P implies R, which is a, if we, if we use the BDD, it will be uh, automatic. <coughs> but uh, I want to explain the structure of the proof. And so here the proof. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> so the, the proof goes like this. First, I can state that P implies Q because that's my uh, left uh, conjunction here. And then uh, I will assume that uh, P is true. We can always make assumptions. And given this assumption, I can uh, obtain that Q is true because P implies Q and I assume that P is, uh, P is true. Also, I can have that uh, negation of R implies negation of Q because I have it in my hypothesis. And then the proof goes this way. I will assume the negation of R. So every time you have an implication, you try to use it. <coughs> and then I, uh, if negation of R is true, I have uh, not Q, which is true. Uh, and so by this way, I have not Q, which is true. And by this way, I have Q, which is true. And then I have a, a, an absurd case. You cannot be true and not true, because it's logic. <coughs> and so I can conclude whatever I, I want at this point, and what I want to conclude is that under hypothesis P, R is true, which is exactly the proof. So, the, on, I, I use this proof because it's uh, non-trivial to imagine how to make the proof, because you have to go to the excluded middle, and you cannot do the proof without the excluded middle. So, let's say just, this is the proof, this is the way I want to describe my proof, even if many people think it's uh, complex to present like this, this is the way I, wa I want to, to, to explain the proof. If I take the proof assistant I use, not every day, but uh, very often, it's a cop. Maybe you've heard about this, uh, this uh, theorem prover. So COQ means uh, booster. I should say booster. Right? Uh, <coughs> so uh, the idea of uh, 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 proof assistant is that you uh, state your, the theorem you want to prove, so it's exactly the same theorem, and then you go to, to the, through the proof. So this is a manual proof. Uh, of the same uh, thing, so I will not describe in, uh, in, uh, in detail, but I show you how it works. So <coughs> you are in the tool, so it's interactive. Maybe the other point, yeah. <coughs> so this is the thing I need to prove, and then what I will do, so this is a state, and I will mutate, mutate the state to uh, do my proof. So it's a very imperative way of thinking about uh, uh, doing a proof, so it will go like this. Uh, I'll just show you the, the start. So I put all my hypotheses in, in, the, in the context above the line, and the, below the line is the conclusion. And then I just um, do things like this, some assertions. So it's the same proof, and at the end, exactly the same. And at the end, I have my contradiction, which uh, makes the proof uh, true. Okay, so. Of course, you don't understand the, the, the details here, but what I want to, from a programming point of view, what you have here is really uh, the idea of your memory. And it's a complex memory because it's a tree, uh, a goal. You have many goals in general when you do a proof. You have the main goal and then sub goals and sub goals, sub sub goals, etc. So you have a tree. And what you do is you mutate the tree by uh, 
uh, using what are called tactics like this. And if you read this, uh, you cannot understand the. Uh, at least the proof, the structure of the proof is here. And the, when I read this, because I'm uh, used to natural deduction proofs, I understand well, what happens. And if, when I read this, I cannot understand what happens. I need to play it in the tool to understand uh, what happens. To be fair with uh, Coq, Coq is not to do natural deduction. The uh, proof assistant is to help you make the proof as, as quickly as possible. So if I click the... No, I don't have the... I don't know. So, oh, okay. So let me just... <coughs> Comment this part, okay? And here we can uh, automate the proof. It's just propositional tautology, and there is a de decision proce procedure. So you can. Uh, it's a one-liner, except that it doesn't work. I don't know. Should be a one-liner, yeah. So okay. So in code, in general, you try to be to make the proof uh, the smallest proof as possible. The thing is, of course, you cannot understand what happens. So for a simple proof like this, you prefer this way. But for a complex proof that, let's say, uh, takes uh, three pages in a book, you don't want to have uh, just uh, the automatic tactic. You want, you want to understand the, the structure of the proof, and, and etc. So that's, uh, that's uh, what I'm very interested in. And that's why I don't really like to use this example. So uh, <coughs> I decided to implement mine. Uh, and, and this is uh, the way it looks. So it's, uh, you, here you are in the closure uh, programming language, so it's CIDR, the equivalent, equivalent of slide, the closure. <coughs> uh, this is uh, like the packages in closure, it's called the namespace, NS. And so uh, I will require a few libraries. So this is uh, uh, the core libraries of Latte and then uh, quantifiers, propositional, logic, equality, classical logic. And uh, I'm in closure, but I want to get back and or and not because this belongs to logic, not programming. So, so, but this is something you can do, and <coughs> so it works uh, similarly, so I hope it works, yeah. You can define a, a theorem, the main difference is that I don't try to mimic the mat mathematical notation, it's just uh, enrich S expressions, let's say. <coughs> I have square bracket, and I kind of enjoy the square brackets. <laughs> the square brackets are for uh, binding things, you know? for example, I assume hypothesis H. And the proof in uh, Latte are exactly like the natural deduction proof. It's in uh, expression S expression form. Uh, sorry, this is this proof exactly in S expression form. Uh, and in general, you do it step by step. So this is a step. So, but it's ex exactly the same thing. The difference is that I have to justify more precisely each step. So, and this is clearly a functional programming. I should confess it's typed functional programming. This, this part. Okay, so, but the main idea is that I'm in the closure programming language and, and I'm doing mathematics and proofs uh, in the same environment, and I think it's a good environment to do, to do that. But probably it's not a surprise because there are only whispers in the room. So. <laughs> there is nothing new in a way that you can uh, uh, make your programming language do whatever you want uh, it to do. <coughs> so, just to summarize, um, Coq is a, a mainstream uh, theorem prover, proof assistant. Uh, <coughs> is a, well, from a DSL point of view, we can say it's an external DSL. It has its own language. It's a standalone tool. It's implemented in OCaml. But if you want to extend Coq in OCaml, it's possible, but uh, it's really, really for power users. Uh, I know people doing that, and I don't envy them. It's, it's not uh, very uh, funny to do that. The type theory is very rich. It's a very expressive uh, logic, uh, but the, so it's a good, it's an advantage. But the problem is that then the kernel is the implementation itself is extremely complex. Uh, <clears throat> also, it tries to mimic the um, standard mathematical notation, and it's uh, it makes things very complex. Uh, because when you're on paper, it's easy to do mathematics, but when it's on a computer, the notation will get back to you every time. Uh, and as I show you, the way you do proofs I, is very in an imperative way of doing proof. Well, I prefer the, uh, let's say, functional way of doing proof. <coughs> uh, 
uh, in LaTeX, the difference it's uh, internal DSL, so you are in your host programming language. The implementation is very, very small, so it's all almost described in the paper. There is no, the code is not in the paper, but the explanation of the code is in the paper. But it's maybe 300 hundred lines of code, so it's very easy to, to, to re implement it. Uh, and of course, I use the implementation and the declarative proof step. So it's very uh, two different ways of, of doing a proof assistant. Of course, I don't claim that it's better, it's more. Uh, closer to what I want to, to, to have uh, under my keyboard. And it's obviously smaller and least pure. I don't know if we say least pure. So, I will make a summary of all these DSL things. So, what for me makes a DSL beautiful? And this is my agenda. Uh, so, <clears throat> first, you need to pick up an interesting and rich domain. Otherwise, you can use any language. For example, HTML for me is not a very interesting uh, uh, domain. Uh, so, of course, it's important to have a DSL for HTML, but it doesn't make it a beautiful DSL. Internal DSL is the way I, I want to do things. That is, I don't want to change my uh, habit of uh, making everything uh, by uh, programming. So, proving is programming, programming is proving. It's, it's done. Maybe one particular point is that the card construct should come first. You have to. There are uh, domain principles that your software should convey. So, for example, object-oriented programming. I'm also from the 80s uh, uh, teaching, and, and uh, it was object everywhere. But when you take a domain and make the con a domain concept and make it a class, it becomes a class. It's not your your domain anymore. So, for example, here a, a definition is a definition. A theorem is a theorem, and a proof is a proof. It's not an object or it's not a function. It's, uh, it, 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 it stays, uh, it, it keeps its, its status, and I think it's very important. But of course, sometimes you want to go further. Uh, you cannot be 100% declarative, otherwise you don't use a computer, just to write on the paper. <coughs> and, and for me, what is important is you should use the host language to extend your, your uh, you, you should have the full power of your language, even if it's dangerous. I, I, I trust myself, so it's okay. Uh, <clears throat> and so I, it's very controversial because I'm the next schemer. And there is something I don't like in, in scheme is that when you extend the language, it's not with the language itself. But it's only for syntax rules, there are other. Uh, uh, but anyway, you have a, um, in a way, well, okay, let's stop. <laughs> But at least that's why I got really interested in communism and also closure uh, instead of scheme uh, at the end. <clears throat> uh, okay, and, and the last, maybe the last point is that I found that some closure specificities are interesting when you implement a DSL. And then they, they could, uh, so it will be maybe redundant with uh, what we did, uh, what, what we met, uh, Hans uh, talked uh, this morning. Uh, so, to explain how you extend the, the system, I will uh, explain this uh, quickly. Uh, when you do a proof step, it's a construct like this. You, you want to have, as you name your state, A, B, C, D, or whatever you want. <coughs> and you state some proposition, an explicit proposition. And then you have to prove that this proposition is true at this point in the, in the, in the proof. And technically speaking, a proof, uh, proposition is a type in type theory, and a proof has to be a term, a lambda calculus term, a functional program in a way, and uh, the principle, a very powerful principle called the Curry Howard correspondence, that says that if your type u, your term u, sorry, has a type t, or it means the type of u is equivalent or equal to t, then what you have is a proof of t. And finally, uh, you interpret it as proposition key is true. So a proposition is true if there is one, at least one term having this uh, type. The way the algorithm works, it's, uh, I, I implemented the type inference uh, algorithm. It's described in the paper. And so it will give you a type, let's say uh, uh, u, a <coughs> block as u. And uh, th then what you have to implement is a uh, normalization of your term, so the type u and t are, are normalized, 
to the normal form, and then you compare normal form for uh, alpha equivalence. So it's called beta equivalence, probably you know, in the normal case. And if it's true, if they are equivalent, then your step is uh, correct, and the step, the name, will be a variable that bound to uh, the term u and the type t. So that's the way uh, the type theory works for making a proof. <coughs> And then you want to automate. So one way to automate is to uh, just forget the proposition. So that's exactly what uh, the cop proof assistant is doing. You forget the proposition. You just work with terms. And I can do with that, of course, <coughs> because you can uh, you have type inference, so you can get automatically from a term the type of this term. The problem in this case is that you are not declarative, because the declarative part of the proof, what you want to prove, is the most important part, and you forget. But sometimes it helps uh, avoiding some redundancy because it's easy to have a lot of redundancy when you do proofs. So, but it's the easy, easy part. The complex part, when you want to automate, oops, it's this one. You have the proposition, but you don't have the term. So, <clears throat> what you, the question is, is there a type, a term uh, having type T, which means a type T is inhabited. And uh, in fact, this problem is not decidable if your type theory is uh, powerful enough. <coughs> and uh, th thanks really, because otherwise mathematics would be uh, done already, uh, because any theorem should be uh, prov provable and this is decidable even. And uh, of course, that's not the case. But you can help uh, by uh, allowing a program uh, using a function here that will generate a term. So that's uh, the main hook in, uh, in the language, which is, I call it special, so the def special. So it looks like this, you, <coughs> you give it a name, it's like a function, uh, give it a name, you have your arguments that will be passed by the user, and also all your um, environment, so the, all the definitions, all the theorem definitions, etc. The context, all the hypotheses in a way, uh, also. And then you can write arbitrary uh, code, that generates uh, a term of the expected type. So when you want to use this uh, kind of uh, thing, you, you use it on the right part, is here. And the arguments are, are given like this. So you have the full power of uh, your programming language to, uh, to uh, automate one proof step. And uh, the, the only way, so after when you generate the term, the, the term, the type checker will work, so there is no problem of soundness here, only if your algorithm does not terminate, your proof step will not terminate. That's the only risk when you do this. So it's a typically a least way of doing things, right? You, you have a hook in your DSL and you can write this in your DSL. So. <coughs> Finally, I don't know how many, do I have two, three, two, uh, two minutes? Two minutes. That's okay. <coughs> the final part is about uh, proof generation. Sometimes a proof is very cumbersome to write, write by hand. It can be very long, especially when you do proofs in, uh, let's say, uh, algorithms, something like that, not pure mathematics. <coughs> and so you would like to generate, write some list code that generates some proof. And since I'm using uh, macros, uh, it's mostly for the user, for the top level, the level. Uh, <coughs> it's, not, it's not very easy, so I could put code here, but then I want to put some uh, 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 expansion inside, etc. So it's, uh, uh, especially in closure, it's, it's really not a, a, a good way to do things in, in closure. So what you will do is uh, use a more literal uh, version of the, of the proof. So that's one nice idea of closure to have extended literal, like uh, these are vectors, which have maps, etc. And so it's almost the same. So as a user, you don't want to, to write this. But it's very easy to go from, sorry, from this to this. And it's easy to generate this kind of uh, structures in closure. The language is done for this. And so <coughs> it's the way, uh, uh, it's a good way. So it's really uh, data-oriented macros, they call it like this. And you can go from one world to the other one. It's quite interesting. So this is an example of hands, which is an anonymous uh, proof step. Uh, hands, something it's true. Uh, <coughs> Uh, but I encountered an interesting limitation is that in general, in macro expander, you have a, uh, you you do uh, let's say one level of expansion and then the macro expander will uh, will uh, do it uh, implicitly until there are no macros anymore. But
But here, what I have to do is to do it bottom. I have to first look for expand. I get a big uh, data structure, then I do type checking at compile time. And then, so uh, you need a user level macro expander. And uh, there is one uh, that has been implemented as a library called Mid. So I will uh, just conclude that the list is cool. And <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, the, for the moment, I think the uh, mathematical libraries are very uh, uh, too simple to really write a program. A program is not a, s a simple piece of mathematics. It's quite complex. So, for example, the code proof assistant is quite uh, uh, good for this kind of. Uh, so, ultimately, it could be. For example, I, I started to, to formalize fixed point theory in like that. So then you can have recursive functions, etc. Et so it, it, it's not an easy. Uh, it looks easy, but it's very difficult to, to formalize a program. But ultimately. So I have a kind of question, but if you if you wanted to learn to use this, can you walk through this graph? Vandervarian's algebra or something like that and go from the beginning of the book and build up algebra with this system. Oh, so that's my... Uh, is it, uh, if, if I want to develop, a, let's say, a pure algebra library with groups and monoids and something like that, uh, that's exactly the, thing, the kind of thing I'm, I'm, I'm doing right now. So now I have a set, type set theory and then a, a monoid and a group and so that's the kind. Of, also, one one of my uh, contributor is interested in geometry. So you can also implement uh, geometry. Do you, do, you, do you use the famous the um, new univalent? Uh, no, 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 uh, no, no. Because I don't understand. The, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even understand the problem. They, they, they ask. I think it's it's, it's uh, related to equality. So I use the uh, standard uh, type theory theoretic equality. Uh, which means that you have to explicit the type of the two things you want to equal, and that's a limitation. You want things to be um, uh, not um, explicitly equal, but intentionally equal, and that's why all this. Uh, but it's not uh, ready for prime <laughs> It's uh, I don't understand really. I try to read the book H O T T. Last question. Yes. So the difference between the recursion. Sense that uh, you have a termination checker? No, so it's very different from uh, I don't have inductive, so I don't have a, a fixed point in my lambda calculus. But uh, I do exactly like uh, the Isabel program is doing. I encode a fixed point theory and then a recursive function. So it's like a, uh, it's called a, a deep embedding. So the functional programming language won't be the lambda calculus that you. And the reason is because if I do that in the text, uh, you lose um, uh, what is called uni uniqueness of typing. So you lose the easy type in France. So it will make your, your kernel already. That's why code is so complex, because the kernel is very complex. So I prefer the deep on the Merci beaucoup.